Welcome to the Mulligan Sue Podcast. I'm Terry David Mulligan. The video version of this interview with Jim Cuddy can be seen on the Terry David Mulligan YouTube channel. And you want to see Jim's face because he's got a great smile. He's funny. He laughs at everything. We're here to talk about actually a number of things. First of all, Jim Cuddy. His new album with the Jim Cuddy band, All the World Fades Away. The band's been on the road for quite a while. As of uh, November 23rd, today, Saturday, they're playing at the National Arts Center in Ottawa. And then next week, midweek, mid Wednesday, I think, he makes his return to Massey Hall with the Jim Cuddy Band. He was just there not too long ago, being inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame along with his partner, Greg Keeler. And that's the end of the uh, Jim Cuddy concert season, so to speak, for 2024. Then he and Greg Keeler fly out to Vancouver on the December the 6th through 8th to attend the Whistler Film Festival in Whistler. And they premiere screening of their Blue Rodeo documentary, Lost Together. And we'll talk about that and what was revealed in that documentary. Jim will talk about the plans for 2025 for Blue Rodeo because it's their 40th anniversary. There's a lot of things to celebrate. So here's a conversation with Jim Cuddy from Blue Rodeo and the Jim Cuddy Band. Enjoy. I'm Terry David Mulligan. This is Mulligan Stu, CKRA Radio. He's right there. That guy right there is Jim Cuddy from the Jim Cuddy Band and Blue Rodeo. Let me see those gnarly fingers again. Let me see your guitar. No, the other side. Look at that small hand. The other side. Right? Are they callous? It's like it's a tiny little hand. Oh, yeah, it's definitely callous. But I struggle with these little hands. I watch Colin play or I watch my sons play, and their hands are gigantic. Easy for them. No wonder they can play so well. It's easy. Is the Crippler there? He's just over there. Wow. What a guy. You're lucky to have found each other. And uh, you're on the road with um, with uh, a, a large uh, ensemble? What is it? Well, the whole band. So uh, we are we are a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So we have uh, keyboards is uh, Steve O'Connor. Yep. Drums is Joel Anderson. Colin Cripps on guitar and vocals and many things. And Lindsay uh, singing and playing violin. Myself and uh, Basil Donovan, of course. Do you limit the amount of guitars that Colin can bring? <laughs> is it in his contract? He, he just asked me if I limited the number of guitars that you can bring. He says, yeah, but he has a full rack of guitars, okay? I just, I'm quite, uh, uh, normally I, I don't have time to actually look, at, really study a tour uh, date on a, on a sheet or whatever, but All the World Fades Away, uh, uh, your, your album, we've talked about previously, but the tour, uh, very interesting how you've done this. You started, <laughs> you started at, at Taz uh, in Vineland. I do. It's funny. I you're understand saying that. It like you're saying it like it's it's an unusual thing. No, if you're going to start um, anywhere, do, why wouldn't you start uh, there? I do Taz as a, a yearly, an annual event uh, on the solstice in June. And yes, the re record had just come out, I think, on the 14th, and we did it that weekend. And uh, I also did uh, Jackson Triggs at the end of the summer, um, which is a beautiful amphitheater. They're both beautiful shows. I mean, Time in Niagara is well spent. It's beautiful down there. So uh, tonight you're playing in uh, Parksville at Knox United. Um, I've driven by it. I've not walked into Knox United. It must have great acoustics. It's going to be a bit of a challenge because we are sort of set up to play larger places. Yep. But uh, it'll be very, it's very beautiful. There's a big cross behind us. I don't know how I feel about that. But um, uh, um, it, yeah. it, I mean, is it, it isn't it is an active church. It's a working church, and uh, they're very very nice here. And they they want all sorts of stuff. I mean, we're kind of in the children's section, so there's a there's a, a, a daycare here. If you go into the bathroom, the, the sinks are down at about two feet, and you have to <laughs> lean way over, right? And uh, and uh, they have a, they had a tai chi class going earlier, and they just there's a woman here named Karen, and I think that her her mission is to create programs that will bring revenue in and stabilize the church. Sure. So the concerts, apparently she does 30 or 40, 40 concerts a year. She does, yes. And that's pretty amazing. And, and it's, it's a beautiful place to be. It's just, just north of Nanaimo, so it's not, not off the beaten track. So it's good. Maybe better for the Cuddy Trio. 
I think it's going to be good for the whole band. Okay, you know, I think the, the band can the band makes a lot of music, and we can make it at different volumes. I don't think that that's I think that that's a, a challenge. We've already done our 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 record party was at was at the new Hughes Room in Toronto, which is an and it's a big big ceiling one, and it was about the same about four hundred people. So yeah, we're, we're we can do it. We're we're, we're hey, listen. If you ask a drummy drummer, Joel's a wonderful guy, but every, drummers are all the same. Say to a drum. Now, tonight we might have to adjust a little bit because it's a little going to be a little quiet. I can do it. I can do it. I, I know how to play quiet. Don't don't tell me what to do. It's because I'm he knows I'm on the verge of suggesting we take away a few drums, and they don't want that. <laughs> Is there an organ in the building? Uh, there. You know, I don't know. There's a grand piano. Okay, fine. That's all you need. Okay, yeah. um, I did. I made a comment on, on the air uh, to the, uh, uh, the CKUA audience, and that was uh, whether you see him at Bose in Red Deer or Massey Hall, you got to go see this band. Oh, that's nice. Because right? I mean, Bose is going to be a small club, and Massey Hall is going to be Massey Hall. It's yeah. Same and you know show. what? I I don't think I've been contracted to play a bar for twenty years, and Bose was really fun it was a it was a I, you know generally when you play a bar you think okay that we're going to lose the lower uh, quieter part of our dynamic sure uh, because people are drinking and they're going to be loud yeah and this bar which is quite a large bar um they were great like if they want if i wanted to get zipped up they would there was dancing there were people at the front i could tell a story it was quiet it, it was it's and also i have you been to bows no it is it, the walls in the dressing room. Everyone has played there. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's spectacular. You just see everybody's name on there. So, so uh, I was pretty happy to join the legions of artists that. So have, and, and uh, conversely, the bar. conversely yeah. said the clever interviewer. Uh, right. The twenty third at the National Art Center and the twenty seventh at Massey Hall. Um, those rooms change the dynamic yet again. And how how so? Or do you you can't walk in there and pretend that it's Bose? It's just Massey Hall and the National <laughs> Arts Center. Right? It's different. No, no, of course. But I would say that the the majority of the tour has been more like Massey Hall and, and NAC. Not necessarily as big. Last night we played McPherson Playhouse and and we played the Orpheum the night before. So we're that's what the the whole tour is geared towards towards that in terms of sound equipment and in terms in terms of what our set is doing. But I wanted to play rooms that I could talk in. I could tell stories. In. Yeah. And uh, and Bose was the only one I thought, oh boy, what's this going to be like? And it turned out to be perfectly fine. I don't know what that noise is. I'll leave it with you. Uh, December the 1st in Brantford, Ontario. Uh, then, just one thing. Uh, are, any Christmas shows? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Blue Rodeo will do a couple between Christmas and New Year's. We used to do um, the night before New Year's. We used to do things closer. But honestly, I will have worked. We will have worked so much by the time. Because not only do we finish this tour, but then, you know, luckily, this Blue Rodeo documentary that we've done is having its debut at the Whistler Film Fest. So we're going to be at Whistler and then we'll come back. And I mean, it doesn't end till it has to end at some point. And so it's sort of like the middle of December and it'll be till after Christmas. So no Christmas show. Sorry. That was a long answer to a short question. Sorry. Are we going to like, did you like the documentary? I thought the documentary was really interesting and it was nerve wracking because I think that we committed to being as honest as we could be. And that involved revealing certain hidden or at least obscured parts of our history and we talked about them and you know the funny bit is trying to reconcile all the dates and everybody buddy uh uh getting uh, remembering the same things but the difficult part was is the fractured part of our history and how honest we were about that and so it was um it was a little bit uncomfortable doing a lot of the interviews but i'm also glad that the story is told and also that I don't have to tell it again, because <laughs> it's some of it's a little painful. Yeah, I did an interview this morning with um, the directors of a documentary called Sugarcane. 
uh, which just won the Critics' Choice Awards. Uh, two of they they were nominated for eight, and it won the uh, Sundance uh, Grand Prize. Um, it's about the reserve outside of Williams Lake, oh. and about the residential okay. school there, and the residential school in Kamloops. Story that had to be told, yeah, and must be seen. And so I, I, my mind this morning was all about documentary at eight o'clock mm-hmm. in the morning. However, the name Sugarcane begs mm. to be a title, begs to be a title of a song. Absolutely, positively, I'll leave that with you. <laughs> I'll leave that you know, one I, with you. I, I've been. Uh, this is. This leads me to something. So, I've been. Um, doing some uh, small in person things at indigo books across the country yes. where i where people buy an album and then i do a song and we talk and then i do a song and we talk i do a song and then i sign the records and somebody said to me this and this is the first time they've done it mostly they're asking questions yeah. and uh, making comments but she said you know i have a suggestion for you <laughs> and of course as soon as she said that i could feel myself go mm. And uh, she said, I-, I think you should write a song. And I said, okay, hold it just a sec. I want you to know that every single songwriter in the world and in history, whatever follows, I think you should write a song about, will never, ever get written. <laughs> because all songwriters take umbrage to being told what to write about. And, and, and so all of a sudden, you'll put a red flag on that particular. Now, you only suggested a title. That's right. It's attached to a, right. a very heavy subject yep. that, that requires, that certainly requires some art to to keep keep fully awareness. So that's not quite the same. I didn't intend to do that. It just popped out. But I just, I, <laughs> first of all, I love that I love the name that they call it Sugar Cane. And yeah. then, then, you, then you follow the storyline. Um, uh, and speaking of the the, the book, book signing tour, it was or book signing, it was a record signing tour, mm-hmm. um, uh, and the and you know a couple of songs. Uh, it's another way to to travel. It's another way to reach out. It's another way to build that community. It's really cool. Did, was it was it uh, had to be planned out well? Well, Indigo has planned it out really well. They were the one that suggested it. Yeah, okay. I I wanted <clears throat> clearly wanted to these story these songs have stories attached. And I wanted to be able to tell the stories. I did them on Spotify to begin with, and and uh, so this was a way of doing it. But what's the benefit of it is has been is not just me speaking. It I tell I do three stories, three songs, but I hear other people speaking, and I don't truly. I mean, as many people as we meet, we don't really get to hear them speak. We. We, sure. we shake hands and we take sure. a picture and we sure. move on and then we perform for them. Yep. But this one, people are standing up and they're telling me things about themselves. They're asking questions or they're just making a comment. We'll come up afterwards. They'll tell me something from their life that's attached to a song they heard. So it's been very, it's been very fulfilling to do it. And and it goes like been totally on board. Good. Like they they. They got it all. Yeah, you need, got you need help. You got enough on your plate without having to worry about all of that. So you just, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, let me go go back one step, please, to the documentary. Uh, does it cover the whole career? Does it cover an album? Does it? What's what's the, the breadth of it? It covers the whole career, but it really focuses on Greg and myself. Yeah. So our our journey through New York, etc. Um, it is inevitable with a ninety minute documentary that certain aspects of the band are going to be short shifted. And so it really just follows Greg and, 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 and Basil, of course, uh, through uh, starting the band, what came before and, and where we are now and, and the, all the ups and downs. It was kind of funny because we did intensive interviews, you know, hours and hours of interviews. I mean, I think Basil did two four hour interviews. Greg, of course, long. And uh, they said to me at the start of my interview, well, you know, the other guys were talking about all the ups and downs of the band. And I said, I don't, I don't know what you're, what ups and downs. We've got a pretty steady trajectory. And then they started to mention things, right? Yes. And I thought, what is the matter with me? What, what have I done? Yeah. I have, I have smoothed out the bumps. I have, I pretended to myself that none of this other stuff happened. Yeah. And so it was, it was, it, there was a bit of a reckoning for me uh, to be more uh, to accept all the things that have happened. 
Did I make the final cut? <laughs> come on, come on. I, I honestly, I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. I'm sure if it was up to me, you would. But I don't, I don't honestly don't remember. I, I'm sure you did. Did how, were you intense? Was it a long interview you did? No, I did no interviews. Oh, you did no Nothing. interviews. Okay, no, nobody, so, nobody yeah, approached you, me. I thought maybe I, I walked me. through a shot somewhere. <laughs> never mind. Never see, mind. see there, see there's a lot of that. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Some people being short shifted <laughs> is that it's impossible to to gather together all the people Listen. that we needed to gather. No, no, you started this. You opened this door. You opened this door, and I think that's members of the band have felt like their story wasn't told you know because they've been contributors for a long time and so uh it's it there I, I don't think you could make a documentary without people feeling like their contribution was not diminished and and i i recognize that as true so well here's sad. how i identify with that my friend okay the, my i appear nowhere in the much music documentary not that's a weird but that's weird I remember you told me that. I was like, well, that just doesn't make sense. <laughs> so I, It doesn't make sense. You've been a huge contributor and a huge part of the character of it. So I don't understand. But I, I think that there was a lot of criticism about the much documentary. So I think you're probably in good company. <laughs> Speaking of that, I see, I've see i seen Eric Amba a number of times this summer. Oh. Because I, I do a, a concert up, up around where she has a cottage. And it's always nice to see her. Nice. She's so like a wonderful, wonderful woman. You were on stage at the uh, Orpheum Theater, were you not, a couple of nights ago? Two nights ago, yes. Did you sing Impossible? Yes, of course. Yep. Yes, How did I it did. feel? Uh, it feels um, very meaningful because I had done a uh, an Indigo one in the afternoon or at noon. And so often what happens when I sing that song, because it's about um, uh, children uh, who struggle, and are homeless uh often people come up to me and tell me just briefly with tears in their eyes about their own and it, it is impossible now, that's stupid i didn't mean that it's you cannot possibly judge or guess who is going to be affected it's not there's no socioeconomic factors about which children will yeah. suffer and so it's moving for me and 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 it, i'm not entirely over it by the time i go to do the concert and so um, yeah, it means something to me to to be playing that for people. I just finally thank you for that. I appreciate it very much. I just finally looked had a chance to look look around your room there. It looks like you're in a veterinary clinic and, and you just brought your dog in. <laughs> well, we're in the church. And okay. I, I had to do uh, something online this morning and I was in the uh, I was in the library. So the library I was I, I told the person I was talking to. All I'm looking at is books about death, grieving, spirituality, and God. There That's the whole. That was the okay. whole. That was the whole shelving unit in front of me. <laughs> uh, were you ever? Well, here's a here's a question. As an aside, I don't think I've ever asked you this. Have you been, or are are you now spiritually religious? Have you? Did you have an upbringing like that? I didn't really have that upbringing, although my obviously my parents were both i mean we had much more to do with my mother's uh, parents um they were church people but they were united and they were farm people and so it was very practical level of religion said grace of course but we we maybe went to sunday school till we were six or seven and then it was pretty much uh, everybody was on their own so you know it's funny i think i mean i i recognize and accept everybody's everybody's uh, need for spirituality. I think a lot of my spirituality has come from psychedelics and Don Juan. You know, uh, reading reading the Cas Carlos Castaneda's books and and taking those trips and and recognizing there was something well outside of my everyday consciousness. And so uh, I would never discount or discredit anybody's belief, but uh, I don't I don't have a uh, formal connection to an organized religion. And in fact, somebody just gave me this this book, God is Not Great, <laughs> oh, yeah, by Christopher great. Hitchens. That's God, nice. Christopher Hitchens. Maybe you can so, leave uh, it with the library there. Oh, I got to read that. I don't. <laughs> it would probably start to smoke. 
So let me get this right. Eight provinces in six months. You're heading home. Going to be back on the right end of the country for Christmas and holidays and whatever. Finding yeah, that's a balance. Finding but you also, I mean, you also have highlighted something that is a regret. I regret that we didn't get PEI, and I always regret that we didn't get Newfoundland. We will figure out Newfoundland. I don't know that we'll figure out PEI, but we'll try. And I've had nothing but PEI artists around me for the Jen Grant, Rose Cousins, uh, Stuart Travel that does all the, the cruises we're doing. I, it's all PEI. So it's, it's almost it's like slapping me every day. Can I ask you about, uh, about just just I mean you're dealing with 2024, but d- because you 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 guys do plan a year six months ahead, what's 2025 look like? What's the business look like? Uh, 2025 is important for Blue Rodeo because that's the 40th anniversary yeah. of the band, and so there's a lot of things um, uh, on the burner. Um, we'll have we'll do some touring. We have obviously the documentary. Um, we have some some really special things, some releases, some some special things that we're dealing with as we speak. And uh, yeah, like so much about it I can't talk about, but but it'll be it's going to be pretty. Why be can't pretty, you talk about it? What's the problem? Well, because uh, because I'd be blowing the surprise, right? And so obviously, oh, okay. hey, look, here's what I think. Oh come on, this, this is not about me. So did you see the Celine Dion documentary? Yes. It was amazing, right? It was amazing. Incredible. And incredible showed you what an incredible, perhaps the greatest singer we've ever produced. Exactly. At the end of that documentary, did you were you left with the impression she would never sing again? Yeah. So when she sang at the Olympics, oh, were you surprised? Oh man. It was just it was such an emotional moment. Okay. So you realize because you've been in this business that when they put that documentary out, they knew she was going to be singing at the Olympics. And they knew that they would leave everyone with this impression that that poor woman would never sing again. So that the impact of her coming out of the Eiffel Tower would be, would be so, it would have so much impact, be so powerful. So in our own little way, not like on the Eiffel Tower with Celine Dion, we're just trying to keep a few things it, in in their wrapping for for a surprise. Well, thank you for that. Now I have to go find out. <laughs> are people liking your your new music? Are they finding? Are they choosing their songs the way they would for uh, Blue Rodeo? Did, uh, uh, have you found another audience? I think that what I've done is consolidated an audience for myself. Sure. I think that uh, I think a lot of the people that come are obviously Blue Rodeo fans. Yeah. And that's a different kind of concert. What I think is uh, been successful with this tour is creating uh, a level of communication between the audience and myself. And I think that people are appreciating that. I think they're appreciating the record as a different, um, not necessarily a party record. It's a, a more contemplation record. And, and I think that I feel sometimes when I'm on stage that I have accomplished what took me 26 years to accomplish, which was create uh, a, 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 a character for myself yeah. and uh, outside of Blue Rodeo. And um, that feels good. And sometimes it feels kind of overwhelming. Like mm-hmm. to have done it twice is uh, one song. Is, one is song pretty, at, pretty, pretty rare. One song at a time, one gig at a time. Mm. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the only way. That's, that's been our modus operandi for yeah. sure. One person at a time. <laughs> right, then. Um, uh, I should know, by the way, uh, uh, last thing about the documentary. When does it actually physically come out? When will we see it on, on screens, or how is it going to roll out? I think that after the film festival, I think that the first airing, and then, then all airings, it will be February 1st. Okay. I think that's that's one okay. that's that's happening. Okay. Uh, thanks for this. Uh, any surprises? Anything you want to surprise us with? Anything you... Uh... This no, not no, news. I don't. I'm no. I think I've you know I've been talking so much about myself in the last four months. I, I I've got to got to pull it back at some point. I did try a wine from the Canary Islands last night, which is the first time. Uh, what, what was it? it? Luton Negra, Luton Negra. Uh, 
first time I've ever tried that grape, first time I've ever tried that wine. It was very interesting. It is almost um, impossible to characterize. It was very sharp. It was very light, but it had, it had some unique flavors. And I was wondering if, they, if there would be a food that, you, that would really enhance it. But have you ever tried a wine from the Canary Islands? I have not tried a wine from the Canary Islands. Yeah. I'd like to be there to try Canary Islands wine. Uh, <laughs> of course. And, and of, of course, course. What, what we hear now about wine is that uh, the, the generations to follow us are not terribly interested in wine. Yeah, I, I listen, I, I think that the generations that follow us are not particularly interested in drinking. I, I, I was hearing podcasts that say that now, you know, the daily use of, of cannabis has far exceeded uh, daily use of, of alcohol. And I certainly know with my kids' friends that, they're just not, they're not as into drinking. They're not, there's nothing to discover about drinking for them. There's no, they're already open and they're, they're already, uh, they don't need any of the, 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 uh, the can opener, uh, element of, of, uh, the psychological can opener of, of wine. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. You're two things, two things, you're just two things. One is yeah. it'll be the Grammys. And secondly, um, when you and uh, Greg were on, and and we had a great disc. It was a great interview, um, and he was. I, well, I asked him about the songwriting, getting the songwriter Hall of Fame. He was he kind of distant. Yeah, it's no big deal. I think <laughs> you, I think I think you remember. But then I, from yeah. all discussions and from all video that I've seen, apparently he was just over the moon. I think that Greg was actually overwhelmed. I think that yeah. it was. Uh, I think that it was something. I'm. I'm going to put words in his mouth, but I think that it was something he would never have expected in his life, yeah. and and it seemed like a, a supreme accomplishment. Yeah. And so he was. <laughs> the next day, he he said, "You got to fill me in on all the things that happened. It's just a blank to me." And I think that he was so, you know so hyped up about it and beautiful to watch his songs be performed i mean it was overwhelming it was overwhelming to to watch your songs being performed by other people <clears throat> and realize that they completely have a life of their own they they are not yours anymore um it was yes the sense of accomplishment was kind of brought tears to your eyes but greg um He's, uh, you know, he, he's a very, wears his emotions very close to the surface. So he was, uh, yeah, he was just dazed by the end of the night. I was so thinking, yes, it meant was, a lot to him. I was thinking about you guys. I, listen, I just, uh, I finally, I was just looking at the, uh, the Grammy uh, nominations this year. Under, um, uh, Do you identify with Roots or Americana or Folk? Oh, I think probably more Roots and Americana would be, I like Folk. But. Okay, Uh uh, roots, American, American Roots, Mark Knopfler, Sam Beam, Afi O'Donovan, Sarah Fierro, uh, John Han, uh, uh, Shem Shemika Col Copeland, Americana Album, T-Bone Burnett, that, that's, yes. that's closer, right? Charlie mm -hmm. Crockett, Maggie Rose, uh, I'm just, I'm trying to find artists that I can identify with as I go through it. Same thing with the Junos. I, most of it I can't, uh, but you guys, have, I can follow. It's just, you're my through line. That's what you are. <laughs> well, that's very nice. But I think that we're back to, you know, when we started, we didn't really fit in and we're kind of back there again. Um, I mean, I, I trust you saw the Grammy nominations for country <laughs> album of the year. Yes. And it's pretty funny. I mean, that's, that's completely transformational yeah. because that's not, that has nothing to do with, anything the history of country that's a new new form so which is cool but it's not it's not traditional so um i think we're back there again which is fine i think there's a lot of people still discovering us which is nice and discovering music like us i think that uh, just about playing you know yeah. i mean i think with the reason we identify with the roots and folk and americana is that people play their instruments they're, they're they have to represent by playing that's so right the skill they, they accomplish i mean t-bone burnett come on that, that guy has has produced more beautiful artists and played more beautiful music, so that's great. And, and he was produced by Colin Linden, which is really cool. Well, they go back and forth, right? Yeah. T Bone produces Colin. Colin produces yeah. him. Yeah. Very cool. Good old Colin. I want to thank you for this. Uh, a last question, just an aside. If if asked to, are you comfortable touring in the United States of America over the next four years? Of course, of course. I, you know, I I honestly think that. I mean, obviously. It was a huge shock to me that that man won. I, I don't. 
I don't understand how anyone could feel like he was an appropriate choice for yeah. president. But I also think, okay, well, this is it. Now you get everything you want. Here, here are all the people in place. So let's see what you do to America for four years because you have no, there's, there's no hindrance to your programs. And we'll see if people get what they want. I mean, if you believe in democracy, you believe that this can happen because it was democratically elected. And it's a, a horror show, but not one we haven't seen. It doesn't feel nearly as horrifying as the last time. No. I, it's too bad. I really, really liked Kamala. Yeah. I really thought, I think it was a choice between hope and despair. So if they chose despair, okay, it's their choice. Uh, thank you to you. Thank you to your, your family, your boys, uh, your, all your kids, and all your your family in the room, Colin, et cetera. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Yeah, Merry Christmas and uh, top of the season. Always nice to see you and always nice to talk to you, Terry. And uh, I wish uh, good health for next number of months. And and finally, there's no truth to the rumor that you're joining the Trans-Canada Highwaymen. <laughs> they can't. They, they, where are they going to put me? <laughs> the, the stage is full. The stage is full. Thank you, Jim. All right. Bye, Terry.